You've seen them, those beautiful 3D roses. I've never done them. Watch me become the student. I've never done this design, but I've been dying to try it because it's beautiful. So I thought, you know, 2023 is a new year. I'm going to start off learning some new things. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to lay down. I'm going to do this with gel, by the way. You can do it with acrylic. And I didn't know which way I was going to go, but I like the colors of the gel that I had. So and, I, and it layers better. But I'm going to put down a thin layer of my sculpting gel first. I have prepped this nail and I put my bonder on, which is called Bridge for gel specifically. If you're using gel, you want the bridge. And I want to put this layer on simply because I am putting color directly onto my nail plate and I do not want to put direct color or color directly onto my nail plate. And when you're curing your thumb, pick your gel lamp up like this and shove your thumb in like this and then cure it. So I've watched a few videos, but I'm going to do this with trial and error, sort of teach myself from what I've learned. So I'm going to form it up. Okay, so there is a reason when you see this design why the concentration of the flower of the petals is in the center, not here and not near the cuticle because you need the depth. Okay, so I'm going to start with this really deep mauve color. And what we want to do is get a fair bit on your little working surface here. And you want to keep some of it dark. And then I'm going to mix with white. So put a white down, leaving a space in between because what we're going to do is we're going to mix the two colors together. So we're going to take some of the white, some of the purple, and make a very soft color. See the several shades you got in there? That's what we're looking for. So you've got like literally three shades there. This darker one, this middle of the road one, and then the lighter one. Very pretty. So what you want to do is start with a darker color first and then go to the lighter color as you sp spread the rose out. If you look inside a rose, the deeper color of the rose, whether even if it's white, it's a darker white in the center. Now remember, I do have that layer on there to protect directly onto the nail, so I don't have to, when I'm removing it, I don't have that stain. So I'm gonna put a nice circle right in the center there, and I'm just going to stick it into the lamp and give it just a flash. Here you could do like 15 seconds. Okay, so when you get that first color on there, get a little bit of your hard gel and you want to put a bead directly on that spot, the center of your rose. <laughs> Trying to get it to release, okay, there we go. Let that just settle for just a tiny little bit, let it spread just a little bit. If you look at it sideways, see that? It's a little bump. Okay, so once you get that where you want it, then give it a little bit of a nuke. This is going to be a series of color, nuke, color, nuke, color, nuke, color, nuke, the whole thing. But just like 10, 15 second flash care. Okay, so this is where we get into the depth now. So this is the very center of the rose. So now we want to take, we can even still work with this darker color. I can even sort of do that little blend. You can see me sort of mixing the blend between the two colors to make it a shade lighter. And you don't have to go lighter yet. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this across one side. And across the other side. Okay. And I'm going to cure. Again, flash cure. And every time you make color like that, you want to get another bead of the sculpting gel. This is what I've learned. We'll see what it turns out like. <laughs> we'll see how good my advice is near the end sort of learning together. This is really quite a learning curve. So if you are trying to attempt this, you know, this is a bit of more of an advanced art. So I'm going to put this clear and you can see I'm trying to keep that bead on this thing that I've done with a tiny little bit of more of a spread. Okay, I'm going to give it a 
a little bit of a nuke. Okay, so now that you determined your center, now we wanna make sure the leaves are looking like it's kind of going over. So you have to make sure that the clear in between is wide enough and spreading enough to give the illusion of those petals going over. And how you get that look is by doing this. So I'm gonna go a little bit lighter with the color and I'm painting the petal over top. And I'm also gonna paint it on the landing part of it. Maybe I'll even use the darker color. See how I'm spreading the color now a little bit? Spread that color. Okay, I'm gonna give that a nuke. And once you've cured that, we wanna get another bead. Again, this is where all the layering comes in another bead of your gel and drop it right on that bead and let it work as far as the spread goes. So all the color that I've applied there, I'm going to stretch this bead all the way out to cover that. And you see why it's important to start that high part of it, the deep part of that flower in more of the apex area as opposed to down here because you don't have a lot of height down there. Nails start high here and they go down as they grow out. Okay, so that looks pretty good, I think. <laughs> okay, when you really tell if you've done a good job or not is when you file it all. That's gonna be the telltale. That's where you learn, ah. This is a great way to start our New Year's out, eh, cameraman? This is a great video. This is our first video of 2023. Yeah, it sure is. Hope you guys had a good holiday, a good break. Okay, so I, um, I've i still got that bead there. That was the last clear that we put on. I'm still gonna, and I can go a little bit lighter now. Gonna go a little bit lighter with my color. Okay, I've just got myself a little bit more, so I'm just gonna mix it up. Okay, so I'm gonna add that color just like I would petals. You sort of join it over top of the other two that were there. It's almost like a crisscrossing thing. That's sort of how roses are built. Okay, and I'm going to give that a cure. Okay, and I'm going to, again, every time you do the rose petals, you want to drop a bead of clear gel on top of the whole design you just created. cover that whole design with the gel. And then you cure it. Okay. Man, you, you've never seen this before, so you probably think this looks crazy. It's, yeah, it's uh, I mean, it's coming together now. When I first started seeing it, I was like, oh, yeah. what is this? I'm going to span out again, putting the color. I might have forgotten that a couple times, so. And that, we'll see that in my end result. Okay, give it here again. Okay, so again, I cured the color, so I need to get a bigger bead. Every time you go in for that, you want to get a bigger bead. And I'm going to make this clear reach all the way around to the spread of the color that I put down. Watching videos is so different than doing it, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> I can't wait to see what it does turn out like. I think I can go a little lighter now in me color. This is the one that I kind of wanted to use. Look at this out here. I want to go lighter now. I want the petals to get lighter and lighter. We might even end up with a whiter petal, like at the white petal at the end, right? I'm just going to put a little white in there and make it even lighter. I still want to stay within that mauve purple. It's kind of a smoky color. I really like that. 
Okay, let's get this lighter smoky version on there. And again, I'm going to go with a wider spread. So just like a flower, I'm making it the spread of color bigger and bigger and bigger too. Okay, cameraman, what, did I just do the color? Yeah, I just did the color, right? <laughs> I don't know. We're not paying attention. I'm, well, I'm, I'm just, just watching camera technical details. I know, and I'm so <laughs> into the thought of the next thing I'm gonna, okay, I'm pretty sure I just did the color. So I'm going to now get that big bead. And you sculpting gel, um, hard gel, um, what are they? There's so many different names. They're all the same, right? Hard gel, sculpting gel. Okay, we just want to get that on there. And again, I'm going to do the same thing, making sure that is going on all of the color that I just laid down and made a wider spread. So I want to bring that down and make sure that it's covering that color. Wow, this might look really cool. Wow, it's very interesting. That looks really cool. Hope it turns out okay. <laughs> okay, trust the process. I think I'm gonna go to lighter petals now and they're gonna be bigger and I'm gonna bring it out toward the end. Kinda of think I went too high, but we'll see. Okay, where's that white? Gonna get that white onto here. Oh, if it's pure white, I can just take it right out of the jar, but. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the white. What if I did that far enough? I know this side I did. So I wanna bring that white right out. Just extend it right out. And I'm gonna take that white and do it over here too. Maybe I'll go white all the way to the cuticle. I think it's thick enough on that one side, so I'm just gonna leave it and I am going to cure that. Okay, now we're gonna start to do the extension of it. We're still gonna work with the white and then, but what I need to know, I ended up with the colors, so now I need to put a big bead of my gel. Okay, so I'm gonna put that, spread it right over top of the white gonna bring this down because I am gonna build this nail out a little bit longer actually I don't want too much of this extension because remember the nail gets so much thinner as we go but I do want to paint it onto something so I'm gonna make this quite thin I might have gone too light with this color too soon. I might have gone to white too soon. I might have stayed with more of the, you know, maybe I'll just go back to it. That might not hurt. I'm just gonna make it very, very light mauve. Purple, whatever you say. Yeah, I'm gonna keep the cuticle area white, but I'm gonna do this. And I'll extend this color out. I did nuke that, didn't I? Down yeah, I think it'd be blending if I didn't. When you go back and forth so many times, you start to forget where you're at. Okay. I'm gonna cure that. Okay, I'm gonna take a nice bead of my sculpting gel again. This might be the last one that I do. Okay, so we're going to build out the free edge. I mean, I don't have to make it much longer than that. Okay, so I'm going to put one more layer.
make it about that long. That should work. Okay. So I just need one final blob of gel. And this blob is just to cover that final coat. Not big enough. Of the last coat of color that I put on there, that's all. We just want to put that on there. And my gel is a very thick viscosity so it's easier to work with some gels are runny and that's great if you're used to them but if you're not it can be very hard to learn gel that way so i designed a thicker viscosity so it's a little easier to work with okay and i'm just gonna let that settle for a minute Okay, I'm gonna give that a final nuke. Now, because you've been flash curing off and on through the whole time, give it a final solid, you know, one minute, two minute, whatever the product you're working with requires. And that way you've given the whole thing a complete cure. Okay, so now I get to file and see where I made the errors. And it's all gonna be where I put the application of all the petals. Was so we're gonna see, I should have put it there, should have bigger, bigger spread, all the things we're gonna learn. One thing I did notice right out of the gate though, see the little tiny bit of wrinkling happening? Let me take this off. See the little tiny bit of wrinkling happening right there? Can you see that? I'm just gonna point with my brush. See that in there? I was using this one gel here and then I switched over to this gel, the thicker one, and I forgot that's probably not gonna like flash cure. Some gels don't like a flash cure. So how it's telling me that is it's wrinkled and go, I don't like a flash cure. My bad, and I probably put it on too thick. It's a thicker pigment. That's why it's one of those painting gels. So as I file that off, I'll get rid of it and then I'll fill it in with some white stuff and fix it. But there we have it. That's what it looks like before we file it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and file it and see what I learned. Let me clean up. Okay, so first I'm gonna sort of decide how long I wanna kind of like that see-throughness though, but I'm just going to determine my length and bring in the sides. I always do that when I'm filing. I sort of just decide how long I want it to be and determine that first. Let me turn it, crank it right up. Okay, and I think I'm gonna go kind of oval with it. Kind of almond, like a soft pointed almond. Okay, so here's the telltale. I'm gonna start filing this apex right down and see what it reveals. Ooh. Oh. Oh, that's kind of cool. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, looking nice. It's neat, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's very unusual. Okay. So that's looking actually really cool. Now you don't want to file too much and you don't want to go right through it because you want to keep that design that you've made. Let me address this lumpy bumpy mess that I made. I completely forgot about that. Might not work. I didn't even look to see. Oh, I'm sort of filing it out. That's good. Okay, well, this is really cool. And you can file this by hand as well. Gel files, quite a bit easier, even hard gel, builder gel. The file's easier than acrylic, let's say. And also if you did this with hybrid gel, it files pretty easy too. Acrylic is the hardest to file, but this is really quite nice to file. So filing it by hand is quite doable. One thing I did notice that I don't like, I can see right off the bat, is that the flower, I could have done a little bit more darker color in here. The rose itself is too much to that one side, but probably a little picky. Okay, I think I'm gonna finish with some hand filing now.
I'm gonna go a little bit shorter actually. I don't want too much petal on the end. Cool. Let's take a look at some of the good things I did and some of the bad things that I'd like to fix. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna fix those little boo-boos I mentioned. I think I make that look more like ribbons than I do petals. I really do gotta work on my petal placement because it's not that great. It's more ribbonish. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, but you see that, how the very tip end there is just not happy? See how it's just missing right there? put my brush there. That means my clear gel was too thick when I laid over the uh, color. And when you're going thin toward the end, that's kind of a common mistake. So clearly it was too thick before I put that down. So that's no good. So I am going to take, I mean, it's really hard to do if you're just doing a solid color, you wouldn't want to do this if it's just a gel color, like a gel polish. But I'm going to take some of the gel and I may have to literally just I'll put it in there and see what it looks like, but it's probably not going to look very good. Uh, you don't really notice it, do you? It's not bad. Okay, so what I was going to do, maybe if thought of it didn't look good, then I would just make another petal and go over like that. You just don't want to do it thick. I can buy that, I might say. Okay, so I'm gonna fix the very cuticle part. Remember I said I didn't really like the cuticle? That wrinkle that we had with the with the product that was not really meant to be like a flash gear, there is a bit of a wrinkle in but it almost filed right out. Um, maybe when I did the extra cure on it, that kind of cured it, but I was definitely going down the wrinkle path. And if it really got bad, I would have had to file that all off and put another color in, but it actually turned out okay. And fortunately, the mistake that I made with the pigmented stuff, it's not too bad. I was able to file away some of the bump. Sometimes it can be so bad, it literally will flake off and it's kind of sticky and uncured, but that didn't happen in this situation. I got lucky. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of white because this was pure white near the cuticle. And I'm just going to take a really tiny brush and just fix what I don't like about the cuticle. I just found it a little uneven and I can, you know, go all the way down the side if I don't like that. That's dust in there, that's not white polish on my finger, it's just dust. Okay, that looks acceptable. That looks like I fixed that a little bit better. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer. My cuticle's not in terribly straight. I don't know many that are really. It's just a natural imperfection. Just gonna bring it around as much as I can. Okay, so that's sort of basically straightening it out as much as I can. I, I kind of pedal <laughs> on the end there. Now I'm gonna nuke it properly, give it the full amount that it needs, and then I will top coat it. So I'm gonna take all that information that I've learned, and I'm now going to apply it the rest of the fingers that I'm going to do four of them with some different colors. I can't do all of the fingers flowers because it might be too much, but check the photos out. I absolutely am going to love them. I 
I've used two colors here today, like a smoky olive green and a real soft plum mixed with white. I'd love to know what colors you guys use and which ones you like. Let me know in the comments below and I will read them because I really want to see what different colors you used. See you soon.